it's the weekend and all I really want to do is just read. I think that is the definition of living a soft life when you can just do something like read or crochet. Something that doesn't require a whole lot of thought, doesn't require you to get up and get dressed, put on makeup. It just requires you to relax. I've been hanging around booktube and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of getting hooked. I have been trying to read several books for a while and I think that the subject matter is just too depressing and some of the books are just too technical. So I wanna read something that is actually gonna make me feel good and is easy to kind of get back into the habit of like reading. Cause I used to read all the time. I used to read, when I was a kid, I could read, you know, a book in a day. Now, I can't even concentrate long enough to do that because there's so many other things that steal my attention away. But we are approaching August and it is the laziest part of summer. It is so hot and humid and I don't really want to do anything, you guys. I just want to relax. So I got a couple of books. And I think these are gonna be easy reads. I already cracked this one open before the coffee gets cold. It's about, it's about a coffee shop that lets you travel back in time. What would you change if you could travel back in time before the coffee gets cold? It's translated from Japanese and I have it on good authority from Booktube, from Booktube that it is a really wonderful read. So what I think I'll do, because you know, I'll be reading it this weekend, is I'll kind of like periodically check in and let you know how I'm liking this book. You guys are gonna be my accountability partners. Don't, don't mind that noise. If you ever wondered, it's my ice machine. I have a thing for ice. I'm gonna just read this today. I'm gonna read this book. I also got Daisy Jones and the Six. It's about, oh, finally, it went off. <laughs> Daisy Jones and the Six, it's about a rock band, I do believe, from the 60s or the 70s. Um, I was definitely alive in the 70s, so it'll be interesting. I've heard good things about this as well. Also, this author wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I do have as well. So I'm gonna break that out because that book apparently is everything. So we'll see. I also picked up <laughs> this puzzle, Tamara and the Green Bugatti. It's um, a Tamara de Limpica. Um, actually, this is a painting and they made a puzzle out of it. And uh, I think she painted this self-portrait in 1929. I didn't learn a whole lot about her in art school, but um, her art but her art has always been very striking. It's when you find a woman artist, especially from back in the day, it's always really kind of interesting. So this puzzle has a lot of green. And um, it's probably not gonna be that easy to put together. It's a thousand pieces, but we'll probably start that at some point. I also, I also made a Sephora run, so I'll share that with you. <laughs> Ran out of some things like the Necessaire body wash and decided to pick up one of these. This is my favorite body butter. It has been my favorite body butter for years. Um, but I have been trying a couple of other things because I just wanted to try something different. And um, the truth is when something works, when something works, you stick to it. This actually has been working. This has worked for years, but um, it's really hard to travel with this big jar, but it will last a long time. So I picked this up because I got to keep my body, you know, because I got to keep my body glowy. That's definitely part of my intentional life, making sure I take care of the skin, not just on my face, but on my body too. Um, it looks like Victor and Roth have a new fragrance. It's called Good Fortune. I smelled it in the store. It smelled promising. I love Victor and Roth, 
I love the Victor and Roth fragrances. And um, this one smells just as good as the Flower Bomb, the Spice Bomb, the Flower Bomb Lotus, I think, is it? I forget the name of it. They all smell so amazing. And this one smells amazing too. It's different from the Flower Bombs, but it smells gorgeous, so I got that. This is a top-up of my KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub. Y'all, this is the truth. And um, I just love it for keeping my skin really exfoliated. I try not to use it every day, but <laughs> it actually feels so good on my skin. It's weird because it's not like a sugar scrub. The granules aren't like rocks, like a salt scrub or, or big or thick you know, or scratchy, but they're not like a sugar scrub either, where the sugar scrub kind of just dissolves. It's almost like there's sand in here. I don't know, but it feels really good on the skin and it's my favorite thing to exfoliate with. So I got that. I also got liquid glass because I've straightened my hair and um, I wanna try this when I flat iron my hair. I got the one for coarse hair, but I probably should have gotten the one for fine hair because my hair is actually pretty fine, but it's curly, so I never know. But I'll try this one. If it doesn't work, then I'll get the other one. But this one, it says it lasts through three washings, but it's like a smoothing sealant. So it's supposed to help with like heat protection and it's also supposed to um, help you not get frizz. And you know, it is summertime here and it is humid, so. If I'm gonna be wearing my hair straight, it can't be frizzy. Let's see, what else did I get? I also got the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer from Rare Beauty. It's um, a broad spectrum SPF 20. Not a whole lot of SPF in this, but um, it looked really good on my skin, y'all. So I'm gonna try this. I hate having to do a separate like foundation and sunscreen and can't talk and sunscreen step so it would be kind of nice to have an all-in-one i have a couple that i have tried that have spf in them i have the it cosmetics one i like it but it's heavy and i kind of and i don't really want something that i can feel on my skin i have the glossier skin tint which will work really great at night or when i am using a separate sunscreen but it would be kind of nice to just have you know in this case a three-in-one product it's got some color it's moisturizing and it has some sunscreen as well I probably could put more sunscreen on with this but I think if I use this I can just top it off with like a, a spray sunscreen so or even a sunscreen powder a powder with sunscreen in it so anyway yeah I got that and then I got the Sol Chirosa from Sol de Janeiro. This is their fragrance. And y'all, it smells like sweet popcorn. And I feel like it's summertime and I want to smell like sweet popcorn. So I got this. I got this solely for me. I am probably not going to be on the beach anytime soon. I'm hoping a beach trip is coming soon, but I could at least smell like I'm on the beach, right? And this just makes me, this just gives all the beachy vibes. So these are the things that I got at um, Sephora and the things that I got at Barnes and Noble. So this is the official start of my weekend. We had brunch today, it's Saturday. And um, I think I'll put a little footage in from Wednesday and then yesterday because I tried a new restaurant and I went to a new store. Well, it's not a new store to me. I went to the new store here in my area, Glossier. And um, I'm gonna share a little bit of that with you. Show you that real quick. Actually, I'll just probably show you the TikTok that I made, um, but we'll see. And then um, show you what I got from them. I will do that and then uh, check in with my first, um, hopefully I will have finished a couple of chapters and I can let you know what I think so far of the book. So it's gonna be like a bookish soft girl weekend. <laughs>
So on Thursday, I went to the soft launch for the Glossier store here in DC. And we stopped at one of our favorite restaurants, El Centro. They serve Mexican food. I don't turn down Mexican food. It's so good. I had the shrimp tacos and it was beans and rice and chips and salsa, which I could live on chips and salsa. It was all very good. But let's get into the Glossier store. I inserted my TikTok. Looking for something to do this weekend after you brunch? Why not check out the new Glossier store in Georgetown? Yes, this is the newest iteration of Glossier and it is like an airport terminal. You feel like you are about to take a ride. It is amazing how they transformed the old Sephora store. This is not just a Glossier store. This is an experience in addition to the ambiance they have all of your glossier favorites, including a limited edition luggage tag for your next trip. This was a soft launch, but the store is now open and the girls are ready. So stop by after you have your brunch, after you have your mimosas, and check out the newest, cutest, pinkest shopping edition in DC. And sorry guys, I got my days a little bit mixed up on Wednesday. I know Thursday comes after Wednesday, but on Wednesday we tried a new Creole restaurant, Artie's. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It's food that I grew up on <laughs> because my mother's from New Orleans and um, yeah, it was really good. I had their version of shrimp and crawfish beignets which was definitely something that they came up with. <laughs> it wasn't your typical beignet. Then I also had the catfish with the shrimp etouffee, which was very good. It reminded me of how my mother used to make um, grits and gravy. And they had really good Jack Daniel's shrimp, which I had never had before. The sauce on that was amazing. I really enjoyed all of the food. It wasn't quite the Creole taste that I'm used to, but it was still really, really good. Definitely four and a half out of five stars. This restaurant is in the Del Rey area of Alexandria. So if you're interested in Creole food or you just like Southern cooking in general, I would definitely give it a try. After we ate lunch, we went to Old Town Alexandria and we visited Misha's Coffee, Misha's Cafe, the one near the water. So cute and they have a brand new rooftop deck. I feel like this is someplace I will be visiting more often. I love going into Old Town. I love Alexandria. If I had my druthers, I would live there. And I love being near the water. And the coffee's good too. And apparently they have a really good coffee cake. I did not try it, but it came highly recommended. So if you're in the Old Town Alexandria area, I would definitely give Misha's Coffee a try, especially if you like to work from coffee shops like I do. I think you would really enjoy it. And here's my outfit for the day for Wednesday. It's a white dress from Amazon. Amazon is just the place to go for dresses. I'm telling you, they can't be beat. So I've made it to page 50 in this book and so far so good. This was probably the perfect book to, to pick for jump starting my reading journey because literally every other book that I have tried to read in the past few months, even when I was recovering, I would start it and then I would just stall, just did not finish or could not get into it. And I'm already 50 pages in, and this is good. Of course, reading 50 pages of a book this small is not that difficult, but it's engaging already. It starts right in. They don't lollygag. You go right into the story. You understand what's happening. 
and the characters take a little bit of getting used to. Um, it's very fast paced and um, it gets a little frustrating, but I think it's meant to do that. So um, yeah, I think for the first 50 pages, this is good considering that the book is only 200 and 72 pages, um, I'm already in a good spot. <laughs> I had to adjust my lighting a little bit. I'm already in a good spot. So this is good. So basically, I'm not going to give anything away about this book, just in case you're interested in reading it. But basically, um, as I stated earlier, it is a book about a coffee shop and you have the ability to go into the past in this coffee shop for a very limited amount of time. That amount of time would be before the coffee gets cold. So hence the title of the book. And we start off with a lady. The first chapter is called The Lovers, I do believe, or the first story. It's called The Lovers. It's broken up into four chapters. They're long chapters. Well, I guess they're not really calling them chapters, I guess, four parts. You have the lovers, husband and wife, the sisters, mother and child. And um, we're starting with the lovers. We're starting with the lovers. And you meet um, the main character of the first portion of the book. She's in the coffee shop and she's wanting to go into the past. And we learn the rules of time travel. I love anything about time travel. Like I am totally into the series The Time Traveler's Wife. I know it's controversial for some. Um, and that's fine. The way I see it, it's a story. And that's kind of how I approach anything that I watch or read. I approach these things as stories. One of the things I've learned in my life is that you have to accept circumstances for the way they are. That doesn't mean that you can't try to change things for the better. That's not what I'm saying. But when when someone tells you a story or someone has lived a certain type of life or someone has opinions, it's not my job to make people change. It's not my job to change the story or to wish that it was written the way I would write it. It's my job to just, it's my job to receive the story, see it for what it is not necessarily judge it, just see it for what it is and understand that that is what took place. So the way that I read books or watch movies or review books, it's never about whether, oh, I didn't like it because of this reason or I didn't like it because of that reason. If it's not readable or watchable, I don't read it or watch it. I don't tell people, well, you shouldn't read or watch something because I didn't like it. Because we all approach things from our own set of values, our own experiences, our own life lessons. And so for me, it's more about whether something is entertaining, whether I can read it easily. I don't judge it. So when it comes to something like this, <laughs> I am just appreciating the story. They are telling the story and I am appreciating it. Now, of course, sometimes when you're reading books, there are characters you don't like or there are things that are happening that might irritate you or there are things that are happening that are delightful or that might warm your heart. And I mean, that would be with any situation, whether you're watching a movie, whether you're reading a book, whether you're listening to a story you know, from a friend. I'm going to agree with certain things, certain things are going to resonate with you and, and certain things won't. And that's going to be different for everyone else. So right now, I am just taking in the story. I am just meeting the characters. I am just taking in the setting. They do, the, the author does a very good job of describing the coffee shop. You feel like you are right in the story. You feel like you are in the coffee shop. You feel like you, you feel like you are witnessing these characters and experiencing these characters and getting to know their personalities, um, you feel like you are actually experiencing the story. This story does a good job of showing you rather than telling you to me. So you feel like you're experiencing what the author is trying to convey. And I like that. It has made reading the first 50 pages very, very easy. 
And I suspect I'll probably get halfway through the book tonight. I don't know if I'll finish it tonight, but I'll probably get halfway through it. Like I said, so far I'm on page 50. So, so I guess to sum up this first portion of the book and where I am and why I'm going to keep on reading, we'll just say that we are already into the story. There was no lull. They didn't lollygag. They got us into the story. Love that. I am experiencing the characters. I feel like I understand the setting. I feel like I've been shown what it is that I need to see to understand the setting. I feel like I'm in the middle of the story and in the middle of the action. I can feel the main character's frustration because there's a little bit of that there. And I can also, and I'm also anticipating what is to come. This book is doing a very good job of building up anticipation. And that is what keeps you, and that is what makes you turn the page. So that's where we are so far. I'm loving the book. It gets really good reviews. A lot of people love it. I've watched a few booktubers talk about it and um, they said it's wonderful and that it's a great story and that you'll feel good from reading it. And um, so far I could see how that would be true. So let me get back to it. Good morning, you guys. It is Sunday morning and I woke up this morning and I proceeded to read up to page 152 in my book. So the plan today was to do very little, to just read, <laughs> maybe go get some coffee at the coffee shop, but then I remember that I had an appointment today and it's an important appointment. So I'm not going to get to do the lazy girl. I'm not going to get to do the soft life Sunday chill today, but that's fine because I'm very excited about this appointment and um, it's not something that I'm ready to talk about yet, but when I am ready, I think you guys will enjoy it too. So anyway, just misting my face with the Glossier's Soothing Face mist it's rose water it's a nice mist um i don't know if i like how it comes out though i feel like you have to pump a lot and um i don't know if i like that but it feels and smells really nice so i'm just gonna do um a light makeup look for today because when i leave here i'm gonna go get coffee and a little something to eat and then i have to go to my appointment and I'm going to try to squeeze in some reading in there too. But before I get into the book, I wanted to show you what I'm working on. So I crochet and I just learned how to do granny squares. In fact, this is my first ever granny square that I've ever done. I love crafting and I love cooking now. I'm learning to love cooking more because now I do it because I want to and because I want to make things that I like, not as a chore. You know, for 20 something years, I cooked every day for my kids and for my family and for my husband. So now I cook things that I like and I cook when I like because all of my family members are good cooks. So no, not it's not one person's responsibility to cook anymore. And um, I retired from that a few years back. But I love doing those things because to me, crafting and um, cooking and creating art you know, all of those things speak to being a soft woman and being able to pursue endeavors that are beyond just the day-to-day -day grind, beyond cleaning toilets, beyond, you know, getting up every day at six o'clock in the morning to get dressed, to commute to work, or, you know, I mean, I know some of us have to do it. There was a time in my life where I had to as well. And, um, I don't know, maybe in the future, I'll talk about how we can make that very artful. And that doesn't have to be such a rat race because it doesn't have to be. And I even learned how to make my work commute a softer um, time in my life as well when I did have to make the work commute. But now I don't. Now, you know, I'm a full-time content creator and artist and retired housewife. So um, that is the life I built for myself. And it didn't take me 50 years. It I was pretty much on this path in my late 30s, 
I was pretty much already here before I turned 40 or right when I turned 40. Um, but I'm digressing. So I made my first granny square. I've been crocheting since I was a young girl, but I made my first granny square and I'm going to frame this one because it's the first time I've ever done it successfully. And, um, I am making a blanket, which will have this pattern for my niece. And so I've started just doing the center pieces for these. And I wanted to show it to you because I may do, I'm coming, because I may do at some point a video about crocheting. You know, back in the day, women, um, you know, obviously everything about back in the day was not perfect. Um, and women have made strides and people of color have made strides and we're still trying to make strides and to be to reach our goals and to do them without being hindered or you know kept down but one thing about a woman who was kept or a woman who really lived in her femininity women pursued like creative pursuits they they pursued you know um the arts and um they pursued crafts and they were able to learn languages and read books and do lots of wonderful things that you don't necessarily get to do um, if you're also grinding and hustling and constantly focused on you know where the next um, big idea is coming from or what the next work project is and so I think that a woman can be whatever she wants to be. And um, for women who want to get out there and grind because that's what makes them happy, I love that for them. And for women who want to just learn how to do all of the things, take painting classes, embroidery, all of those things, that is valid as well. And the sign of a, you know, a truly well-rounded woman was one who could do a lot of things. So that's kind of what, I've envisioned myself. It's funny. I think Beyonce's album is Renaissance and I've been calling myself a Renaissance woman since I learned what the Renaissance was <laughs> because I believe that women are capable of being and doing multiple things, especially throughout our lifetimes. So I'm sharing that with you. Now I'm using the Rare Beauty. This is for the first time, the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. It's only an SPF 20, but when it gets really hot, I don't like a lot on my face and the two steps was driving me nuts. So I'm going to try this. Um, I tried it out in the store and I liked it. Um, I'm just trying to get my SPF and my moisturizer and <laughs> my coverage all in one. And I don't know if this is too light now. It kind of looks like it is. But when I looked at it in the store, it didn't seem to be. But apparently it gives you a lovely glow. So I'm being very generous <laughs> and I'm um, putting it on my face. And this is just going to be my base slash sunscreen step. And we'll see how this wears throughout the day. Um, I, I don't like putting a lot of pigment on my face, mainly now just because I don't like what I have to go through to get it off. So that, I mean, you know, if it's on there and it stays on there and it doesn't transfer onto my clothes and when it's time to take it off, it comes off then that's the win. So I am on page 152 of the book. I love it. It's it's easy to read. It's an easy read. And it was the perfect pick. I keep saying that, but it's true. It, it's just an easy read. It's a little bitty book, but it packs a lot of punch. And it also is filled with just lessons on how to communicate. Um, I use the Moleskin um, app on my phone. I just started using it. Um, I guess it's been about a week and a half now. And in that app, it's like you can kind of plan out your life and document your life in that app. And so that's what I've been doing. And um, I did like a voice dictation on the journaling part. This is very pretty. Oh, wow. This is very pretty. Okay. Just going to add a little bit more to this side of my face. I feel like I neglected it. Um, let's go with it because it's very moisturizing. So, you know, hit the neck too. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, what was I saying? I did a voice dictation in the journaling section of the app and I just wanted to talk about how I liked how 
they let you know what the characters are thinking because the author lets you know what the character is thinking because you know in italics it will do the thing where it's like what's going on in its head in its head in the person's head so one of the things that I, I annotated was that I like how the author lets you know what the characters are thinking you know there's that inner monologue that the character is having and I like that I like that we know what the characters are thinking we see their doubts we see their thoughts we see their trepidation you know they're wondering like did I make the right choice I like that I also like that this book gives descriptions throughout even of places you've already been like you've been in the coffee shop you know from the beginning pretty much and midway through the book you get a description of another aspect of the coffee shop that you didn't really see like they talk about the color of the chairs which was not something that I don't believe was previously stated if it did for some reason I dumped it but I don't believe that it was and it also talks about how pristine the coffee shop is even though it's really old so I like that because you get ongoing descriptions um the banter back and forth it's good it's it's pretty fast-paced um, this is a book that has been translated, so it can get a little bit tedious, but not much. It's not anything to worry about. Um, and already, you know, one of the things that this book, you know, says to me and confirms for me, because it's something that I've always thought, is that we really don't communicate well with each other. People really need to learn how to listen and read the room and in relationships, especially intimate relationships, close relationships. Um, and when I say that, I don't just mean like romantic. I mean like mother, daughter, sister, you know, family members, friends. We need to be able to communicate with each other and listen to each other and not be afraid to tell each other how we feel. And I think that's a big um, part of this book is about interpersonal communication and how people leave things unsaid or how people are afraid to be vulnerable. So I'm loving that um, you're getting this lesson or these lessons in this story. It highly resonates with me. So that's where we are so far. Um, I only have about 120 pages to go, I think something like that. I am definitely more than halfway through the book. So I should be um, finishing it today. Um, I wanted to get this video up though today as well. So what I may do is end this video here and um, go ahead and pick up tomorrow and let you know my, I guess, review on the book my full review on the book tomorrow. Maybe that's what tomorrow's video will be about. But I wanted to end this here because I wanted to get it up today. And um, it's also pretty long already. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. But yeah, the book, if you know, you're know you coming in on this part of the video and you haven't been watching the whole thing, it's before the coffee gets cold. And the other thing too is when I, I noticed that when I, um, have watched reviews on this book or watched people talk about this book um, on booktube and bookstagram they're very vague about the premise because it's way more it's about way more than when the coffee gets cold there are rules to this thing honey and um <laughs> You don't just go into the coffee shop and sit in the chair and get transported to the past. There, there's rules, you know, there's some, some interesting characters and, um, you know, and there's a reason why there's not a line around the corner of people trying to go back into the past and talk to someone from their past. Cause it's not a piece of cake. It's not a walk in the park. Like you know, there's levels to this, which makes the book even more fun to read because there are definitely, there are definitely levels. It is not just like, oh yeah, you know, you get transported to the past and they're just telling you the story of what, no, it's way deeper than that. And yay 
for us. I love that for us that are going to be reading the book because it is much deeper than I was initially led to believe. Um, and I think it would make a great movie for that reason. So anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you here so that I could get on with my day because I know my husband is probably down there having a conniption because we were supposed to have been gone. Um, but I love the way this rare beauty looks. Of course, you know, I covered it up with, or not covered it up, but kind of tamped it down and finished it with my hourglass powder because that's my jam. I'm not doing a whole lot. I feel like I've already done a whole lot. Um, <clears throat> I will fill in my eyebrows today because I went a little heavy on my eyes. So let me go ahead and just, you know, I do the mascara on the eyebrows because I don't really want to be bothered with a separate brow product. Although, if I did have to choose a favorite brow product, it would be the brow product that Glossier makes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really bummed because when I was picking things up, I was trying to remember all of the things that I wanted to get. And I realized that that was one thing that I didn't get because I used to order it all the time. They have a great brow cream that is kind of like a mascara. It has a similar um, applicator, like your mascara. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't see because of the mode that I was filming in. I couldn't see my eyebrows. It was washing everything out. So I switched over. I'm filming on my phone as I usually do. Um, but I'm loving the way this rare beauty looks on my face. I am babbling and rambling at this point. So again, <laughs> thanks for watching this video and um, stay tuned because I will do my book review tomorrow. And um, if anything else happens, I will share that with you as well. All right, guys, see you in the next one. Here's that makeup look out in the sun. I really love that tinted moisturizer. Highly recommend.